hi everyone welcome to my channel today we are going to be analyzing the characters in the novel and his of the savannah by chinua achebe in our previous lesson we discussed extensively the plot of the novel please subscribe to the channel click the notification bell so that you get notified when the video on the themes in the novel is uploaded so today we are going to start with the character of chris orico chris orico in his youth uh, he attended lord lugard college with his friend ek and sam then he served as the buffer they regard him as buffer and uh, he is the mediator between the athletic and outgoing sam and the intelligent and pensive Ikem. So, as adults, the three of them, that is Chris, Oriko, Ikem, and Sam, now occupy prominent roles in Kanga's new military regime. And Chris' role as commissioner for information again put him in the position of a go between uh, between Sam and Ikem and he engaged in a contest of we and Chris stepped down as an editor of the National Gazette to accept his uh, position on Sam's cabinet after which uh, Ikem became the newspaper's uh, editor so Chris is now Ikem's boss but he himself report to Sam, uh, which put him in the uncomfortable position of um, trying to get Ikem to comply with Sam's will. So, although Chris sees Sam becoming mad with power, Chris is reluctant to give up his position in the government. And Chris finally assert himself when Sam orders him to fire Ikem, and then he began to have challenges with uh, the president, which is Sam. So, fleeing for his life, Chris comes in contact with the people from the uh, rural area and begins to understand his country better. Because all this while he has been in the government, he do not have the direct contact with the people from the rural area. So, he now, Chris, he now associates with people and then Chris is kid trying to save a gay Adama from being raped at a chaotic party. And uh, his last word, uh, the last green, he mentioned the last green. And uh, this is a reference to a running joke he, Chris, he came and sang here in the early days when they imagined themselves as three green bottles arrogantly situated on a shelf, each bound to four. So when he mentioned the word, those people who were with him, people like Emmanuel, Adama, and several others, uh, had the word last green. And that was even used to remember Chris even after his death. Another major character in the novel is Ikem Moshodi. Ikem is the outspoken and reform-minded editor of the national newspaper called the National Gazette. His position often puts him in conflict with his boyhood friend who is now the president, that is Sam. And note that Sam is the president of the country called Kanga. So, Part of his duty, part of Ikem's duty is to broadcast Sam's messages to the people which are Sam's way of feeling that he is radiating power from the capital of Kanga to the people. So Ikem, on the other hand, believes strongly that the press should be free and independent of the government regulation. He and Chris often debate the effectiveness of uh, Ikem's editorials, but Ikem feels that even if 
the editorials are futile. He should continue publishing them. That probably a day will come when Sam, the president, will change his mind and uh, he will rule according to the yearning of the people. So, despite the fact that uh, Ikem is a London educated intellectual, Ikem is very sensitive to the need of the people, especially the common people in Kanga Republic. His editorials are often harsh in their criticism of the new ruling regime, which makes him the president regard him as treacherous. So he can state that the best weapon against ineffective or unjust government is not fat, but passion. Somebody who have passion to criticize the government, passion for the common people, passion for good standard of living in Kanga Republic. So unlike Chris, Ikem is an extremist, as in his passion to see a very good standard of living in Conga and a, ruling, a good uh, ruling uh, system. We can regard him as an extremist who is not interested in working gradually towards progress and so uses his powerful position as a journalist to call for change. Speaking to a group of students, in a university, he can discusses the role of the storyteller in depth, insisting that it is the role of the writer to ask questions and make challenges. He concludes his speech to the student that writers don't give prescription, they give headaches. They give headaches. I also love that. Uh, uh, his opinion. Writers don't give prescription, rather they give headaches so that those who are being criticized will think well and uh, rule well. So he can also make jokes about putting Sam's head on the country's coin, which led to false report that he came call for the beheading of the president. Even the people who reported it knew that it was, it was not true, but they were looking for a way to get him off to cut him off. So, Ikem's fate already orchestrated, Ikem is taken in the night by government secret police and killed. See, Ikem's presence continued to be felt among the people and his friend, a present, threatened by his friend who is pregnant at the time when Ikem died. The, another major character in the novel is the president himself, President Sam. And Sam is the new president of the military regime in power following a coup, a position he holds due in no small part to the effort of his friends and schoolmate Chris and Iken. He is described as being very athletic and very charming in the novel, having adopted the ways of an English gentleman. Early in the novel, he can comment on Sam's sense of theater, adding that uh, Sam is a very gentleman. Although Sam attended the prestigious Royal Military Academy at St. Post, Sam is fully aware that he is unprepared for his new government leadership role. However, he soon become blinded by power when his friend, Ikem and Chris encourage him to accept the position of becoming the president. Because uh, Sam does not have a very good standard military training. So when he became the president, he was blinded by power, insisting of being called your, your excellency. No, he doesn't want to be regarded as the head of state, your excellency, which is used for democratic president. But now he's a military president, but he still insisted that he should be called your excellency and then seeking to be elected as president for life. So, military school trained Sam and his fellow cadet to remain aloof from political matters. And Sam was at first quite terrified in his new role. His solution was to gather together his friends and give some of them 
government position from which he could seek their advice. Once Sam overcame his fear, he became he began to relish his power, becoming extremely upset at even the meanest demonstration against him. So Chris can see that Sam is now a dictator in the making and considers him a baby monster. But Sam is only concerned about securing as much power for himself as he can without interacting with the people of the country, Kanga. In fact, Sam is having a dissident province called Abazon in hope of forcing them to comply with his authority and he said, desire to become life president. Abazon refused to, 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 to participate in the referendum that will make Sam a life president. And then he began to punish them for that. Not bringing any kind of a development or basic amenity to the province of, of Abazon. And then Sam soon become consumed with anger and insecurity. And when his political ambitions are disappointed, he recalls being told how dangerous boyhood friends can be. So after he arranged for Ikem's mother and Chris has fled, Sam himself is killed, is killed by another coup that took over the government and he was buried in a shallow grave. So that was the punishment for being a dictator. He was buried in a shallow grave, not given a state burial. So another character is Beatrice. Beatrice is, is uh, Chris' fiancé. He's one of Achebe's most fully developed female characters. So she worked for Sam and he is an old friend of Ikem. So through her connection to Chris, Ikem and Sam, she plays a significant role in the actions of the novel. She was born the fifth daughter to her parents. Her father had been hoping for a son. So she was named Wani Buife, Beatrice Wani Buife. And the name means a woman is also something, Wani Buife. So as an adult, Beatrice is well educated, having earned a degree with honors in English from the University of London. And she holds an important civil service position as an administrator in the state office. She's appointed as an administrator of a local government in, uh, uh, in Sam's regime. So she also enjoys writing short fictions, which he can read and admire for its muscularity and also masculine quality. So Beatrice is characterized by sophistication intelligence and independence but she is also attuned to the common people on an intuitive level never having planned on a career in the government she is very disturbed by accusations from the people that she is ambitious in reality Beatrice desires what she has desired since childhood and the desire is to be left alone in her peaceful solitude and not to attract any kind of attention. But Achebe the author places her family in the mythic tradition of the people, making her a sort of manifestation of Indemili. Demili is a god, a goddess sent to man. The goddess was sent to a man to oversee morality. So although Beatrice is unaware of the might regarding this goddess, she grows to she grows to a woman possessed with wisdom, self-knowledge and compassion as she connects with the culture of her land. At the end of the novel, she participates in the naming ceremony of Ikem and Elewa's baby. And the baby is a girl. And uh, Beatrice named the, the baby Amechina, a boy's name. And the boy's name was given to the baby. So, and then Mini is made the part never close. So, this is bold not only because she has given a boy's name to a girl, it is symbolic that uh, there is still hope 
for the country gangan and the naming ceremony is responsibility is supposed to be by man but now a woman has taken the responsibility another character in the novel that is worth mentioning is uh, elewa elewa is ikem's girlfriend a model of his daughter, which Chris name, which Beatrice name recently, that I discussed with you. Belong, she belongs to the underprivileged people in the society. Her mother is a vendor in the Kangam market. Helewa is a naive, humble, and beautiful girl. She isn't well educated and support herself by working as a sales gear in a Lebanese shop. She speaks Pidgin English, a local African English, which local people acquire from the British during colonial colonization. When I say, how far now? That means, how are you? So, how far now is a Pidgin English, which means, which can be loosely translated as, how are you? Okay? So, despite the fact that Elewa isn't as confident as Beatrice, she has a lot of potentials and strength. But all her strength and protests go in vain when her lack of education render her indecisive in her opinions and choices. It is because of the lack of education, exposure and opportunity that she is unable to carve a path for her own and depends on Ikem who has intellectual energy. So she was like a housewife, depending on the husband. And also, Elewa is highly emotional, as well as rebellious. Sometimes her emotion bursts, her, her, in fact, her emotional burst contradicts her resilience and rebellion. She is also aware of men's oppression around her, and at times is able to see that Ikem is lying to her. It is Elewa who connects Ikem to the common masses of his country. She developed emotionally in the course of the story and made Beatrice realize that one's humble origin does not necessarily make him or her free or insecure. So Elewa, through her experiences, sees and comes to know plenty of things beyond the bookish knowledge that the privileged one possessed. At the end, when Ikem dies, she is strong enough to raise her daughter alone. Uh, it was unfortunate that she became a widow uh, when Ikem died. Another character is the chief of Abazon delegation. In earlier in our discussion in the plot of the novel, I told you that Abazon is a province, or you can call it a state in the Republic of Ganga, and because of their refusal to support the referendum that will make Sam the life president, Sam make sure that the Amazon people suffer. They were denying social amenities, facilities, even though there's drought, the president makes sure water is not supplied to Amazon, so that the people will be forced to accept him as the life president. So, the chief of Amazon delegation is one of the most important characters in the novel, and he's of Savannah. So, he is the bearded old man who leads the delegation from Amazon to the capital of Kanga. His delegation has some... In fact, the delegation has come to the capital to plead with His Excellency to continue with the work on boreholes in drought streaking Amazon. So, the work has stopped because of the people of Amazon's refusal to support His Excellence's claim to life presidency. So, the Amazon elder represents traditional wisdom and is blessed with the gift of eloquence. He speaks about the importance of storyteller. According to the chief delegator, Stories are more powerful than battles. It is through stories that communities can retain its sense of history and tradition and also seek guardians for the future. So the speech of Abazon Eda 
are permeated with traditional proverb. I so much like their uh, their speech, and also it is the speech is even permeated with a lot of metaphors. He tells it came the story of the tortoise and the leopard, which becomes one of the prevailing themes of the novel. So the Amazon editors also honor Ikem for his work on behalf of his people because Ikem is from Amazon. And some even thought that Ikem was the one sponsoring the protest in Amazon against the referendum and against Sam becoming life president. So the Amazon editors also speak and beg the president. Though the president told them, President Sam told them that he is going to look into the issue. But there was no any significant response from him. Another character in the novel, these are minor characters, but another character we are going to be looking at is Agatha. Agatha is Beatrice's mate. Like Elewa, Agatha also belonged to the underprivileged group of the society and uses pidgin English while communicating with her, uh, Beatrice and other people. She is sometimes rude with Beatrice and also cruel to Elewa. In fact, Beatrice initially does not get along with her because of the way she responds rudely to her. But later on, Beatrice real realizes her poor treatment of Agatha and accepts her as an essential part of the female community. And in fact, she later treated her like a sister. Another character is Emmanuel. Emmanuel is an intellectual and the president of the student union in the university. He takes refuge in Chris' safe house and also joins him on his journey to Amazon via bus. In the bus, Emmanuel falls in love with a beautiful lady called Adama. The lady is shy. And moreover, Emmanuel is with Chris where he died trying to protect a gear from being sexually assaulted that the soldier shot uh, Chris dead. So Emmanuel is desperate to see Chris dying and he hears his last word, the last grin. That was the word that Chris uttered when he died, the last grin. So Emmanuel also was so grieved that Chris died and attended the naming ceremony of Ikem and Elewa's daughter. Another character is Mad Medico. Mad Medico is the name, the nickname of John Kent. John Kent is a British man. He met Chris, Ikem, and Sam while studying at Lolugat College. And Mad Medico is eccentric as well as astute hospital administrator. Mad Medico is a man of double standard. He has a genuine regard for the African landscape. And at the same time, he displays his contempt for the country's attempt to run itself and a liking of a centralist statement. So he is deported from Kanga without any valid reason. How can you like a country, a country's uh, landscape, and at the same time hated the country, and even angry that the country want to be ruling itself as a self, a republican government, or a republican country? Can't even want the country of Kanga to still be under colonial rule. And because of this sentiment, without any official reason from the government, he was deported. So in our next lesson, we are going to be discussing the themes in the novel. Please remember to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you get notified when the video on the themes is uploaded. Thank you and have a very good day.